hello youtubers so this is my first video in this video i'll show you how to calibrate your hobby servo motors so that you can use it with your Arduino boards so let's start yeah so first i'll tell you some basic things on how your servo motors that is your hobby servo motors works so in this picture you can see the past that are present inside the hobby servo motors one important part is the pmdc motor the potentiometer and the control circuits i hope you could follow my cursor over there so this is a dc motor this is the potentiometer and this is the control circuit this dc motor is just like other dc motors that commonly called as toy motors but this dc motor has some special gear arrangements so that this the speed of this dc motor is converted to very high torque and the potentiometer sends feedback to the Arduino so that the Arduino will know that in which angle your servo motor is currently present in and uh, it communicates to this control circuit over here and uh, while buying these hobby servo motors there are actually two main things to be considered one is the rotation it may be 0 to 180 degree rotation or 0 to 360 degree rotation and another thing is it may be of metal gear servo motor or plastic gear servo motor plastic gear servo motors are suspended to more wear and tear and uh, metal gears are strong enough and another thing another important thing is their rating so it will be in some kg centimeter it might be 3 kg centimeter it might be 12 kg centimeter or it might be 6 kg centimeter and what does that mean what does this kg centimeter mean so let us assume that this black color box is the servo motor and this red color is the shaft of the servo motor so if it is a 12 kg centimeter servo motor for example it means <coughs> that at a distance of one centimeter at a distance of one centimeter from the center of the shaft of the servo motor you can suspend a load of 12 kgs so this is what the rating means and if it is a 6 kg centimeter then it means at a distance of 1 centimeter you can suspend a weight of 6 kgs so this is what the rating means and for example for a 12 kg centimeter servo motor if you want to suspend the load at 2 centimeter distance it cannot pull more than 6 kgs hope you understand what it is now let's move on to the working of the servo motor yeah this picture shows you how the servo motor works based on the PWM signals. So these PWM signals are obtained from the Arduino servo motors, I mean the Arduino boards. And if it is 1 ms, then it will be in 0 degree. And if it is 1.5 milliseconds, it will be in 90 degree. If it is 2 milliseconds, it will be in 180 degree. So let me open my webcam and show you the arrangement I have for you over here. As you can see, these servo motors have three wires coming out of them the orange one is the signal wire the red one is the positive and the brown one is the negative and i have hooked up these wires to my Arduino board i hope you can see it yeah this is an Arduino Duo milano i have used this board because i have my pin setups that are that can be easily connected to the servo motors yeah I have my pin setups that, that can be easily connected to the servo motors and uh, if you are not having these kind of pin setups then I suggest you to go for an Arduino shield or something I mean a servo shield or something so let's go on to the programming section and see how to calibrate these servo motors so that it will be easy for you to work with the projects so this is the code and before that I'll show one of the projects which I made this is a coconut tree climbing robot i hope you can see the image yeah this is a coconut tree climbing robot and uh, actually it has eight servo motors over here as you can see one two three four five six seven and eight so these eight servo motors were calibrated using this program <coughs> you can you can check what angle it has to be locked if the motor has to keep this position in the eye shape or you can actually this robot changes from an I shape to a C shape so you, you need to know at which angle the servo motor has to get locked so that it changes its shape shape and maintains it so now let's jump on to the coding yeah so this is the coding part and I have attached it in the description below 
let me explain few important things in the coding for example if you want to use it in some other boards or if you want to use it for more than five server motors then you have to change the following things one these are the server names so server one server two server three server four and server five denotes that i am controlling five server motors over here for example if you want to control three then no problem you can use the same code and uh, work with it suppose if you want to extend the number of motors from five to eight or ten for example if you are using an Arduino Mega or something and if you want to increase the number of server motors connected to it then you just have to create additional objects like servo, servo 6 and other things and uh, in your board look on to the PWM pins so in my board the PWM pins are attached to pin 3, 4, 5, 7 and 8 you can find this out by just looking at the board yeah so I don't think you can see it over here Yeah, so if you can look closely enough, you can find the PWM that some pins are written PWM against it. So this means that these these pins alone can provide PWM signals from the Arduino board. And in my board, the pins are the pins are three, four, five, seven, and eight. So that's the reason I have added three, four, five, seven, and eight over here. It it may change it may change according to your board. So look onto it. Now coming back to the coding section, as I told you attach, I mean change the pin numbers here according to your board and then after this void setup uh, in the program you are feeding the values like which motor you want to rotate and from angle and to angle of the motor it is over here, the from angle and to angle, you will be sending these values through the serial monitor and this void call is what fetches the values from the serial monitor like which motor number from angle and to angle and for this since i'm using five servo motors i have given i have opened a switch case and i have given five cases in which each servo motor can be controlled individually for example in key case three we will be executing motor three and that's why i have added the servo three object over here and uh, you can also have the motor to rotate in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction based on the value of num1 and num2 the num1 and num2 is the from angle and to angle if num1 is less than num2 the motor will be in anti-clockwise and if num1 is greater than num2 the motor will be in clockwise direction rotating in clockwise direction so that's it so if you want to add like eight servo motors or something you have to increase the number of cases also so it will be eight cases over here and uh, this is the place where it is it is a void loop place and this is the place where the serial monitor will be getting values from view it will be fetching these values and using this phrase int it will separate it it will separate it and send these values to the void call function that i showed you above so let's start working i will open up the webcam for you and uh, this program is uploaded into this Arduino Milano board and i have connected it connected two servo motors over here these servo motors are Arduino I mean sorry Tower Pro MG995 it is I hope you can see it yeah it is Tower Pro MG995 and I brought it from Vega Robocate sorry I brought it from Amazon actually there's another brand called Vega Robocate where they sell plastic gear servo motors for for cheap prices uh, of course uh, in limited places and uh, yeah. now let's see how it works now I have uploaded the program as I said earlier and let me open the serial monitor for you and in this case this one is servo motor 1 and this one is servo motor 2 for you and I will show how to control them using the code I just explained so there it is and it is asking you for the following details for example the motor number the from angle and the to angle let me open up the camera for you yeah now I'll enter now both these motors are in 90 degree I suppose I'm not sure it might be 90 degree so let's check it out yeah. I'll say that I want motor 1 to rotate from 90 degree to 0 degree and there you go motor 1 rotates from 90 degree to 0 degree maybe I just want it to come back to 100 degree I'll say motor 1 over here motor 1 rotates from 0 degree to 100 degree say for example 
so this is what so what should have happened is it should have sent these values to the void call function and there it should have got into the case one and since num1 is less than num2 it should be rotating in anti clockwise direction so it has come from 0 degree to 100 degrees now let us move to motor 2 motor 2 is also in 90 degree so i'll ask it to move from 90 degree to 0 degree i'll just adjust the spread board so that yeah now motor 2 has moved from 90 degree to 0 degree maybe i'll ask it to come back from 0 degree to 10 degrees there it is 0 to 10 again i'll ask one now the advantage of having the serial monitor is you can know what is the last position of servo motor 1 for example yeah this is the place where i have executed servo motor 1 for the last time and it has been asked to stop in the place of 100 degrees so now i can ask it to come back to 0 degrees from 100 degrees 1 100 to 0 see it is rotating from 100 degrees to 0 degrees you can use this program even after you have made the hardware assembly you can use this program and check if the servo motor is capable of lifting the weight you can check if the servo motor uh, from what angle to what angle should be hard coded for example if you if you have known that your servo motor one should rotate from 0 to 90 degree then instead of in the same program you can just add another light inside the inside the void loop over here for example let me add it for you and make a comment line so that it doesn't get added into the program for example excuse me <coughs> yeah sorry for that for example if you have known that servo motor 1 should rotate from 90 degrees to 100 degrees or 90 degrees to 0 degrees for example you can just add this line into the program like call 1 servo motor 1 from 90 degrees to 0 degrees that's it so here you have hard coded the values for the function call instead of getting it from the user so you can comment line you can comment all these things and after knowing the from and to angle of your servo motors you can make make these call statements inside your void loop and your robot will be totally autonomous now i hope this video helps everyone i'm deleting this you can find this code inside the comment section sorry inside the description you can ask if you have any doubts i'll try my best to clarify it thank you